Previously on Pink Champs. Was Ambush ever your style? Yes. <laughs> Do you not remember Superhead? Okay. So that was the only reason the job got offered to me because I had been a program director and on the air and done all these jobs. Is that what, was that the dream? That is still the look. That is still the dream. Calling on ladies. Calling on ladies. For those of you out there that think this cancel culture shit is is new shit, I was the first one canceled. It's been, yeah, but even but even, the first. But even with Star Bad Joe. Oh yeah. The Aaliyah thing. The Aaliyah thing. I was think part that of that. Was something to play with. Yeah, that was too personal for me. Right. But I should have done more. I, maybe I. I don't know. Long story short, they tried to fire me because of that, and um, I'll never forget. Tracy called me and she goes. How are you doing? And I'm telling her, she's like, I just assume let them fire me and then sue the shit out of them and you never have to work again. Each other. <laughs> and I'm like, I can say that. This is about to be Tracy, in New York. But also, Tracy's trying to figure out how to retire anyway. She remembers she wanted to get out of hot. Yeah, but she was brilliant. I should have listened to her because I look at Envy. He fucking sued iHeart and now he's Breakfast Club. Yeah. Sue niggas, but fuck you sue it. But like, still get a job there. This just goes to show further the disparity between men suing and women suing. Well, you didn't, did you sue? I didn't because of the fear. The fear. But what would happen is we're battling against Star. We're rocking. You know, we get past Tsunami, although he's like, take your money from that station. They don't respect Philippines. They don't respect the... It, it was so bad, and I had to... I had to trust you. Yeah, no, we now... Because you were the only one in there, like... Keeping my show afloat and Ebro, we are trauma bonded. You realize? <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't even. I wasn't even shook like that. I, I knew. I knew. We thought that. you were school. We're like he's from the Bay Area. He don't know how shit's about to get there. I know. <laughs> but I, I felt like you know. I felt like a. I saw <gasps> what was actually happening. I saw the the people who were angriest about it and causing a lot of it weren't even people who actually listen to the program, right? And this was, uh, yeah, I mean, the internet was a thing, so. It was a lot. You know, there was a lot of people hitting from all. It was a lot, and Barry and Mayo and drove down to my house in Willemborough that night. You see how much I'm pouring? I'm having, I'm going through it. And Jayla's father, because, because I, need, I knew, I knew he was gonna make me need too. Can I leave? Thank you. Drove down to my house and was like, I need something to drink. They, they want your head on the platter, so... So what? And so Jalen's father was like, oh, no, no, no. She ain't even been there. Y'all ain't gonna put this on her. Come to find out, Barry had heard the tsunami song and greenlit it. Came into the studio and was like, y'all motherfuckers crazy as hell, but it's funny. But was trying to make me be the sacrificial lamb. And be it not for the lawyers, the lawyers flew in. It was a lie. Oh, my God. I have to drink, y'all. Talk amongst yourselves for a second. But be it not for the lawyers coming in and interviewing all of you individually and you guys actually telling them the truth that Ms. Jones hasn't been there. They were like, what do you mean she hasn't been here? She's singing on the song, right. They didn't know that. Barry didn't tell them that. Because it was e it was supposed to be a quick transaction. Lawyers come in, fire Jonesy, Barry keeps his job, show goes back on, <laughs> Info's probably the lead because she was the agent face of the show and that would have, you know, made everyone happy. Um, and it didn't happen like that. And so, um, so the lawyers asked Envy and asked, did they interview you? I believe so. I mean, they interviewed everybody. Right? Uh, and they, they're the ones that told that I John wasn't even Demick there. John Demick was the PD, remember Demick? I do. That was John Demick. And they told the truth. And then when the lawyers got that piece of information, I guess they realized that if she wasn't there, there's no way that she could have greenlit it because she's not touching a button. There's no way she could have sung on it, but they were like, but it says Tasha. But our pro our other producer. Out to research, she's still out here. Hey, Tay. They made her sing on it, and we have the same first name. So everyone from like Sister to Sister magazine, they're writing about it, and they're like, how could she do this? And I'm like, 
that wasn't me. It wasn't me. But you're a little voice, because now you're on the news, you're everything. My sister from The View is calling, and she's like, Nancy Grace just called and said, call this lawyer, because it's going down. So Nancy Grace. Nancy Grace. She actually officiated my dad's funeral. Nancy Grace, yeah, friend of his family. Hey, Nancy. Hey, boy. Hey. And we called the lawyer, Mel Sachs. God rest the dead. Mel Sachs had a relationship with John Liu. John Liu was the Asian representative that they listened to. Yeah. He's still, I think he's still in politics. Probably. Yeah. We had a, a closed door meeting at his, at his office. And now we just have to rebuild. We and have to rebuild. It's, it's you. And we're at war. Because remember, stars across the street That's now. That's right. So there's no time to I'm lift back your on the now, too. Because you stepped in like a G. And you, direct, and you hired me writers, or okay, the budget for me to get writers, because now John Demick is there, but he don't know what's going yeah, yeah, on. Yeah. He don't know the culture. So you were really, so you're behind the scenes and you're on air. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and then. But, but it was good though. We got some, we was able to get some numbers. We did get numbers. We turned it around. Toe to toe with Star on that and got yeah. numbers. And then he got so flustered he overplayed his hand all the way. Good Lord. And I allowed him to run commercials saying that I was the, the chick that had a kid out of wedlock or the whore or something, and they ran commercials all weekend. And he asked someone that worked in the hospital where I gave birth to send my medical records. Whoa. Because my son had Down syndrome, and he would pay them money. Now, for the record, my son doesn't have Down syndrome, but I, like, that wasn't the point. Leave kids alone. He didn't ask to be born to this raggedy bitch. Right. He did not. None of our kids do. But you're on air. I ha so I really should have sued. But you were always like, no, just beat him in the ratings. Beat him in the ratings. But then he came for Envy because Envy started defending me. Envy is petty party of two always. And when he came for Envy's kids... Yeah, and the way he came, though, was was really... He threatened to bite his daughter's ass and swipe mayonnaise in between her ass cheeks and, and bite it. And her cereal and ask for where she was going to school. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And me and Envy was like, um... Y'all were at odds of how he should handle it. And then Envy was like, we're going up there. And I was it's... like, regulators, bound up. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. We was out, and we... we... And Star either left, got wind of it, and left early. Maybe you didn't. I don't know. I don't even really care. No, it was police there. Police was outside. And Barry Mayo called my phone and was like, where you at? I was like, we down the street. We got to keep some... He was like, get your ass back to the radio station. Because it's bigger than you, Nino Brown. It's, comp it's a company thing. Y'all on company time. And he already just coming on the tsunami. Yeah, he was like, get back to the radio station. Those were the days. It was so much going on. Wait, wait, How many times you do a morning though. show? We got paid. And we got so shit was good. I except how much you got? That's good money. My bad. Was that I mean, what we it probably is. So don't get mad at me, Envy. You've got bigger fish ahead. Hey man, I'm not here for that. No, man. we're not. Cause that's my, my friend. That's my guy. Andy, whatever you and Ebro had, no, cause y'all was acting up while I was inside for 15 years and neither one of y'all motherfuckers reached out. What you talking about? Hip hop left me in them streets for 15 years and while you're here, neither you nor Envy called me to see if I needed any toys for my kids, any formula for my kids, any anything for my kids. And I felt a way. Really? I did. Because I felt Wait, like- Hold on, hold on. Mike Sean too, nigga. Hold up, hold up, hold up. When you leave hot, before you leave hot, you're also still on with. I was syndicated in Philly again, yeah. Again, getting bags. I was so bad. I should have never worked for Elroy. He is so like, oh my God, you are the worst. You're such a bad person. You are a really bad person. And you come off like you're all about God and you speak your epithets and you're a bad person at your core. You're a bad person. What happened though? Um. So I went down there uh, physically, and every day my stomach would turn. Like, just everyone that worked there seemed like they were always, they were all afraid. Everyone was in fear. The climate was so tense and just so. This is Power Ninety Nine. No, this is actually the beat. The beat, excuse me. This is the beat. Um, it was just it was that Radio One shit, and um, Elroy would call me in and act like he was my friend, but secretly he's going behind my back to. Vent Rock, who was the producer that I didn't want to be my producer because I feel like he helped me get fired the first time I was at Radio 1. Mm. 
supposed to be my friend, the DJ I brought down to Philly with me, turned on me to side with Kobe, and Kobe would then go on to keep him employed for years, but he turned on me and sold me out. So you make sure him... about that? I am sure. He gave him some... Don't drag Ben Rock if he was just... Because, you know, Ben Rock's kind of quiet. He's a nice guy. Right? But he's sneaky. He's sneaky, and other people have stories about his... Sneak... Ask Shab Rock. Mm. They had a podcast together. Um, and I, Not a podcast, a, a mix show together. Hear the other side. But he sold me out, and then... Elroy knew that I didn't trust him, that I didn't want him to be on my show. He put him there as a plan. So every day he would go and report back, allegedly, if I came in late. Now, mind you, I'm like nine months pregnant. Fell down in the entire second baby. I'm married. Thank you. No, not yet. Fell down a whole flight of steps what? <laughs> while I was pregnant. And um, the whole side of my body was black and blue bruised, and he still. Like, Elroy had something to say. Didn't think that I was really... I was trying to be cute. I had on some flat, slippery, Gucci slides. And, just, yeah, I mean... and they took on the wood step. And I, but I still went to work the next day. And he, he didn't want me there because he felt like he couldn't control me. When I went back to Philly, my thing was, I'll come back, but Kobe can't have anything, any, any say over me. Barry Mayo said, Kobe has no say over you. So... Because I had that already and I was kind of like an independent contractor, Elroy didn't like that. Like, I'm coming to work and then I'm leaving. I don't have to do morning show meetings. I, I'm a contractor. And if y'all missed it, Barry went, had left working for... Oh, yeah, he left hot and now he's... Which was in, in New York. Right. Now Barry, they got rid of him because of that tsunami shit. Now he's back in Philly. So he called me and was like, how about you come work for Philly? I said, I'm still in at New York. He goes, do both. And and for the record, you know... So much. It's so much. I don't know if... Are y'all picking up? Did it, but I think for Barry, it was a series of other things that took place. Remember, they had spent a lot of money switching CD 101.9, Smooth Jazz, or Chill. Remember that? Whole oh, yeah, thing? yeah, yeah. A lot of other uh, business decisions. That didn't go well for the company, and they were done. Yeah. So he wound up back in Philly, or in Philly at Radio 1, asked me to come back, gave me another bag. But what I noticed is that when I, I reached out to him to tell him about the hostile work environment, he would never respond to me. Yeah. So that means he only wanted me on that station to keep me from going to Power 99 and competing against that station. This might be too much. This might be information overload. I don't know if you guys are engaged, if you care, if this is like too much, too much, too many the layers. Too much detail? Maybe too much detail, but long to the short, Star gets fired after iHeart has to pay all that money to Envy. Yeah, they got him up out of it. And I got fired from Elroy, which is fine, because I wind up able to stay home with Che, my youngest, for a year. And by the way, the year is 06 now? 07? It's 08. 08? And I'm good, because when I left Hot 97, I get a, a what you call it, a golden parachute? Yeah, they paid you out. They paid you out your contract. But they paid me, but it was a lot of money because I had been with the company for so many years. So I got a lot of money. I was good. So in 0809, you got a lot of money. This episode of Pink Champs is being filmed at Shawnee's China Soul. Check them out when you're in town. And if you live in town, come through. It's the Belizean feel of food. Well, to some degree, I think it should be pointed out, too, and I'm sure you live this and have experienced this, where people believe the persona that you give on air is actually your real life. Which kept me from working probably for 15 years because after that, um, so I wound up being home. after. So a woman tried to sue me in Philly, or she did. She lied and said that I, um, that I lost her her daycare business. Um, should I say her name? Thank you, E. Still looking out. Still looking out for the kid. Anyway. And guess what? People take lawsuits for nothing to try to get something. It costs you money anyway. It's documented. This is all documented. I'm just saying. Somebody want to, who knows? So you guys can research it, and Ms. Jones got fired in Philly, whatever, daycare. She said I said something about her daycare and air, but because the boss at the time, Ken Johnson, he, I think, had an axe to grind with me. Well, I don't know. It's so much. It's just so much. Um, so they fired me for that. And um, later on, we will find out she wound up going to prison. Mm. She lied. 
The prosecutor, I think, was a fan and didn't let it go. Researched and found out that she said, she proved that when Jonesy said whatever, she lost enrollment, but she was still charging the state for school lunches. And every month it was more and more money she was charging for. So the prosecutor said, if you lost enrollment, I charge why are you charging more? So you never go down for the initial crime. It's always the thereafter. And that's how they busted her. Mm. And she wound up going to prison. And then you called me and said, it's in the paper. Bitch, you won. Like, you won. You're free and clear. And at that point, it's, it's, it's no use. It's, um... Are we in there? We might be in 2014, 13, 14. That far? We're that far. Because it was a legal battle. Because iHeart, I had to sue iHeart. Their lawyer, oh, I'm on vacation. They tried to drag it out, drag it out, drag it out. Meanwhile, I'm just trying to get my settlement. Because you can fire me. You can fall out of love with me all you want. You're going to honor the contract and pay me. They wound up not paying me what they should have had to pay me, which is why when they called me last year asking me to be a part of their 50 years of hip-hop, I said, the only one over there that can call me is Envy and Thea. No shade to Charlemagne, we've never met. So Envy and Thea, the fuck off my phone. And the bitch that called, I think it was Nicole Spencer. Nicole Spence? The bitch that sued Wendy and Kevin? for sexually something. In, body, but... in that whole lawsuit, it came out that Kev allegedly tried to have me murdered. Yeah. She said this. Nicole, bitch, why you ain't call me? If I'm the target, why you didn't call me? You saving for your lawsuit. But now you want to call me 15 years later, you thinking that the air is clear. Not with this Scorpio. She called me for 50 years of hip hop and I tried to be as not, uh, maybe I didn't even respond, but no, I think I did. And I was like, really? You gonna pick up the phone and act like you didn't know I was about to be murdered? People are crazy. Now, maybe it's me. The murder plots, wow. The industry, the industry is built that you gotta see shit and act like you ain't see it. And if you did get burnt, you gotta ignore it because you gotta do business with the same people. So you just gotta hold that. And then if you call people out for shit, ah, no fuck with Jonesy, ah, ah. No, I said, I mean, right. felt like the, 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 the see shit, act like you didn't see shit part, you know, I think that's the, that's only a certain side of the industry, which is, I think it's because we all kind of come from a street element. So when you see something crazy happening, you kind of be like, I'm going to shut my mouth and look the other way. Crazy. Yeah. Right, but that's because I think a lot of us come from environments where you keep your mouth shut. You're right. So when you get into a business environment, you're in there really to get money. All right, and, and that's and why not. Diddy's going to jail. Exactly. You think he's going to jail? You think he's not? That just might be that tab. I don't want him, I don't want any of our, I don't want anybody, period, going to jail unless you did some shit you should be jailed for. So let's just put that out there. But it's why all of this, all these, now the stories are coming out because of that, see, see, some, see something, don't say nothing. That mentality. And I feel like I was caught up and I was the first one to say something. Like, I feel like Radio One or their employees fired me because I was pregnant. And I sued them for that. And I won money. Because when they did their research, they found out that there was a bunch of other women in other markets that had similar situations with them. Um, so, you know, it's just, it, it, it has always been a lot in my life and in my career. And I feel like when you lose your mom, what's that girl that's on um, the podcast with Joe Button? Uh, Melissa Ford. Don't fuck with her, really? Because she was talking shit about me with the shit that I said, me and Moni with um, Tupac and all that shit. And you listening to Moni and you want to be her mouthpiece? Don't talk on me because you don't know me and we've never had that conversation. And if Moni has a problem, let Moni come to me. Mm. You was a child. You was like 13 or 12 when all this stuff was happening, so I don't appreciate that. But I respect what you said about 
people that lose their moms and how you're untethered in the world and how you lose your base and you have no, you're just out there because no real words have been said. And I feel like my life, when my mom died after I came home from college, has been me untethered in the world. And I'm grateful and I'm appreciative that I'm able to still stand and have somewhat of a brain and um, the ability and the wherewithal to try and teach my kids the right way to be, even though I am a lot not the right way to be. I'm appreciative that I still believe that if you do right and you are able to make it to the other side, that grace will be given. It will. That's why I launched Pink Champs. It's never too late to be forgiven and to start anew and to, you know, show grace. I have kids in the world. And learn. Still learn. Still be a student of your own life, right? To where you can learn from what you did and even pass that lesson on to others. But it's a lot. We come from places where it was a lot. So... The, the the blessing that we've even been able to have, the lives that we've had. Because shit shifted. Our parents didn't have what we had. They had work for the city, work for the state, get you a government job, government. We now have ways of making money in our sleep. And they're like, we're the first generations really of that. So all that they said, they meant well, because that was what they knew. Doesn't necessarily work for us. And they said... And there's people, but there's pieces of that that's... There, Still, because there's how there's people out here chasing this entertainment life with no backup plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no medical benefits. Hit pushing forty. Yeah. And can't go to see a doctor. And you could be creative as hell, but life is gonna keep lifing. Yes. So you have to be aware that no one's doubting you have skill. Right. No one's doubting you might make it one day. You could be that late rising star. Right. But life is going to keep on lifing, and if you plan on being engaged in life. You have to put things in place to where you and your children, because right. you know you fucking, your children are protected and supported. That's all. And and you're protected and supported and you are without being a and burden on your children. Right. Because you don't want to be the reason that they got to end up spending all their bread because you never had your shit together. Nobody wants that. Nobody. No child wants that. You know. Um, you said, Envy said. Envy said, um, Envy said, and this is part of a separate conversation, we're talking about our kids going to college. He was like, my mom never believed in me being a DJ. She was like, that ain't gonna, that ain't gonna be. So he said, so I am always going to 1,000% support my son in his football endeavors. And I got that. I said, Envy, your mom, being a DJ didn't pay back. Being a DJ wasn't even a thing when your mom was coming up. So you can't fall. So he was like, no, I know. I'm just saying, we were talking about our kids, his son just graduated from Bergen. My son goes there, and I was trying to make the decision of whether or not we we're going to move our family up to Bergen County because he was being recruited or if we were going to stay down in the shore. And I feel like we made the right decision because, Shay, Jalen, you will have your day. Shay um, is a freshman on the football team, but they moved him up to varsity for the playoff game just in case. they like, we don't know. We probably good. But in the event that we're not, we know you are about it, about it, yeah. and we want you to be a part. And they wound up winning for the third year in a row. So I am repping hard for the Bergen Catholic football team, three feet. This is why I'm wearing a hat. And I need to get my hair done. But. Let's go, Bergen. Last facts, though. Um, there's some other questions I wanted to run past you, though, because I'm you not going to let the. Part two, though. Well, no, I'm not going to let the accusation that nobody reached out to you. When oh, we yeah. Y'all niggas left nah, me. Let me tell you. Nah, wait, Him uh, and the Michael Sean. Nah, bro. My brothers nah, left bro. me in them hip-hop streets. Nobody asked me if I needed anything in those 15 years I was home. Go. You wasn't home for 15 years. I was. You wasn't. You, you got to. You just, didn't you just get a bag in 2014? It's only 2024. No. 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 You talking about the iHeart bag? Yeah. That was... After the lawyers took their cut, and I was like, we're not giving her the full salary. We're, it was, yeah, paltry at best. And remember, I was out of work. Mm -hmm. So it's, you playing catch up. 
So I don't even think it dawned on anybody that you needed anything. I don't See, this is the thing. Y'all think that black women be so strong and all this got shit figured out and all this got out. I think it's I ain't checked on. I thought you was down. I'm going to everybody else. No, special. Nah, you ain't like, you know. Nobody. Ain't nobody just like me being like, ain't nobody checking on me. Ain't nobody checking on me when it was like when they was, you know, jamming me up, telling me, uh, what's the man's name that jammed me up and told me he wasn't going to, I either had to, uh, the one lady wanted me to be program director and be on the air. Oh, oh, John Demick. So the conversation was, Jonesy, do you want Ebro, remember that? You want Ebro to stay on the morning show or be program director, remember? Yeah. And I said, well, you serve me better being behind the scenes telling me what the white boy's next move is. Remember I said that shit? And I think that you really wanted to be on air. No, I didn't. I wanted off the air. All right, then thank you. Because I always felt guilty, like, no. Did I, did I, like, no. did I do something wrong? And no, he everybody wanted to... always think that. I've been on the air since I was 15. I'm only saying it because I'm like, you wound up on air. I wound up on air again in 2012. And then I felt fucked up about that because I said, wait. Did Ebro, like, nicely walk me out and give me all this money leaving? Because he was still the big boss then. Because he knew Big Boy was going to fail. You had to know he was going to fail in New York. TV Wonder saw that writing on the wall. Shout out to Big Boy. I love you, bro. And then strategically had uh, Rosenberg, because remember, you brought Rosenberg to my door, yeah. and that nigga told me to my face, yes, I want to be on air one day. And I said, no, you will never be my producer. But you well, kept him in I, a I, pocket. Yeah. And then when Scythe and Rosenberg didn't work, you slid your monkey ass. You're not a monkey. But you slid in there. So was that the master? That wasn't the master no, plan. That's like you're talking about five years slow. I said you did that because you knew that you had to save the the because that morning show wasn't yeah, necessarily in their course at the time. And but the real truth. And Scythe, I love you. I'm not. Yeah, no, it's love. The real truth was. Oh, this I Dion. About Dion. Shout out to Dion. Dion, remember BLS and Hot combined. Who's Dion? Dion was over BLS. Dion, I, I don't know. Dion Livingston. And they don't know. Dion Livingston was over BLS. He was over there with Wendy and all that. Remember? Okay. Remember there was. I remember Benny Brown. I don't. Right. So there was a merger where Hot had Kiss FM and BLS. Kiss FM went away and 98.7 became ESPN. And then. Oh, well, remember y'all was bringing me back? Right. And then BLS. In the middle of the night for 98.7 to do. Um, it was a sneak attack. We were trying. Yeah. It was late night meetings. I was like, yes, I'm coming back to New York. And then they fucking tricked us and sold it in the middle of the night and nobody knew. But anyway, then BLS came back over and I was program director, chilling. Alex Cameron, who was on... She didn't fail. But she had become head of the whole market. Oh. She asked me to go in and do mornings with and create a morning show. She was like, I want you to be on air and I want you to do that. I was like, it's not really what I want. I'll do it. They gave me the bag for it. Cool. By the time 2014 comes along, Dion says, I'm not giving you a new contract if you stay program director. I just had Issa. Mm, Issa's his daughter. My daughter. I'm not giving you a new contract. I'll give you a contract if you do mourners. But I won't give you a new contract if you stay program director. So let's think. And you got to get rid of and I'm not even going to run through the names right now, but he wanted me to fire a bunch of people on high if I stayed program director, which I disagreed with. So what was in it for him? Why did he feel like you were a threat? Was he a program director at BLS? No, he's the market manager now. He's the new market manager. And remember, I was VP of the whole group. And so there was rumblings that he felt like I had too much. Ah, that's the plot. That was the, okay. Because it had to be something. It wasn't just... You're my target today. Oh. So, so he was steps ahead in the chess game. Yeah. So anyway, you didn't call me, is my point. You didn't know what I was going. You know what I'm saying? I got jammed up. And and you know how that morning... After I did call and, you, and you called me Rain Man. <laughs> and, I did call him. And he said, what are you, Rain Man? You only call when someone says your name. Because you wish me a happy birthday. And I was man, like, Candy, candy man, man, sorry. I did call him. <laughs> This episode of Pink Champs was brought to you by Bartonura Sparkling Rosé Moscato. This pleasantly sweet sparkling wine has a moderate crimson reflection with delicate floral fragrance of honeysuckle and raspberry aromas. The sweet palette of strawberries and melon make this a wonderful wine for desserts and fruits or simply for enjoying it on its own. Bartonura Sparkling Rosé Moscato. Drink responsibly. Boy, nobody checking on me. 
You were good. You were still employed. You had options. Yeah, because I wasn't going to let them play me out into the wilderness. But why you let them play me out in the wilderness? I didn't know what was going on down there. You didn't keep us in the loop. Yeah, because after Elroy did me in, I was done. Like, I was, like, between the divorce and that. It felt like everything happening at one time, I just tapped the fuck out. and was like, you know what, Lord? Maybe this is a sign to stay home and raise these kids, get rid of the nannies, because we had nannies. It was nannies 24 hours, tapping in on the weekend, tag you it Monday morning. And I remember speaking to you, and you was like, man, I live out in Jersey. I'm chilling. You was chilling for a while. For a while until, like a... Like everything. If, ev if everybody does their part, the chilling would have continued to last. Yeah. But when niggas don't do their part, and it's all on you, and then they want to fight you, and, like, mm-mm. What do you mean fight you? What you think I mean? Physical fight? Legally, I don't know if I can say this. Producers, be aware. Yeah. Physical. Physical. And I got pictures of the bruises, so don't even try. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I fight back. So it's not no, it was rolling, but you should never. And I didn't want my children growing up seeing that because I realized it was normalized to me because I watched my parents go at it. So you thought that this was just shit that happened at all? It's going to happen eventually. But I was smart enough to protect them and said, we're leaving. And we left my house with him in it, and we got out. And downsized and... Rebuilt. And rebuilt. And I'm so glad that I that I was forced to do it, because I was still fighting and trying to host parties and try to make a way when my children really were my future. Because I met some really cool people along the way, and I got to find out who Tarsha was, because when you're not Miss Jones, the phone don't ring. And when you call, not everybody answers. But I will say this. When I did reach out to industry people, just about everybody answered. And I don't know if it was out of curiosity or because I did look out for a lot of people. I also think, and when you, you know, when you had that microphone, uh, people like you until they're the subject. <laughs> and then when they're the subject, they're upset. And I get it. Right? And then it makes sense. But then after the fact, when we're all, when it all, uh, the, the, the dust settles, if you will, there's people that you actually like and that were funny and fun and you had good times with, even though they just they didn't want to be chaotic at a time. Right. They just didn't want to be the, right. the victim. At or, or they was, uh, you know, or, you know, had a job where they felt like if I'm on the phone with you, maybe people will think I'm giving you info or something. Right. So right. Let me just. And, and, even... and it could have very well been that because right. we were fucking vigilantes. We were like, nobody was safe, Ebro. And we were doing what we felt, what we felt, what we felt we needed to do. Well, then we are, it's also true. I mean, you were playing the role of Ebro in the morning and I was playing the role of Miss Jones in the morning. Neither of us were being Ebro in your last name and Tarsha in my last name. But I, like even right now, where you have these blogs posting and people podcasting and you have the Cat Williams incident this year and he out in all these stories and people want the stories, the stories of the stories and the stories. You know, I think that people just like us then, you're just trying to entertain. You're trying to captivate. You're trying to get people to tune in, stay tuned in, click on. Everybody's running the same kind of skit of trying to figure out ways to engage an audience that is... And keep them compelled. And keep them compelled and keep them coming back. Right. And so you see something happening in music and entertainment with an artist. You hear about this, you hear about that, and you got to figure out a way to cover this because it's a story. Whether you want to or not, whether you're interested or not. And if and and if you're like us, and like most people who sit in that <laughs> in their barbershop or with their friends. The, of the culture. Out, of the they're culture. Cracking jokes about the stories that they hear. And if you're going to create a, a, a program that you want people to tune into, guess what? You want to make it feel like they're tuning in to hang out with their friends. That's right. And guess what? It's easy to do because you guys in Radio Land are our friends. Right. Like, you know about our, our personal lives, our professional lives, our, our think you're, like, present to that because we happen to be more, the more authentic jocks. 
than jocks you hear on radio and other, and other places. Now, they're all trying to be that, but we were the blueprint. And it's not all gravy being the blueprint. You got to be built. I, I would always tell you, I don't know if you remember this, I would always tell you, yo, listen, they're going to treat you differently than they treat you things. I would always tell you this. I would always say there's never been a woman that's been outspoken in morning drive and telling jokes that, you know, has had, A, had success, which you were able to accomplish, so bravo. Thank you. Right? Uh, but B, that dudes was comfortable with. Because we see it right now, whether it's Kamala Harris, Hillary Clinton, Anytime there's a woman ascending to a power position, what ends up happening? I don't Tiff trust her. Tiffany Cross. I don't like her. Tiffany Cross, who I love. I love Tiffany. I don't like her. I don't trust her. Uh, she got a bad attitude. And it comes from not it's just hard the to dudes, work she's with. hard to work with. And it don't just come from the dudes. It comes from other women who have been programmed by this patriarchal society. Pick me's. Pick me's. Fucking no, pick me's. No, yeah, no. they're called pick me's. That, that process women being in power as either a a threat to them or something in their brain that said that's not what that's a woman wrong to be yeah doing. yeah because when all along programmed. we were programmed as kids to think that there could only be one cinderella and we all got to fight each other for this nigga's grace and if and we're not case. and that's not the case but for that yeah Boss. yeah spit <sighs> how you feel how did i do you Okay. I wasn't even grading you. Uh, I was. But I felt like I was, a weight was lifted. Better. Why were you judging yourself? I was like, dang, I ain't never interviewed Miss Jones before. Ah! And yet. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Appreciate you. Your love. I love you. Mm. Thank you so much. Of course. Of course. It was really <laughs> Listen, I wake up every day now. Okay. Listening to my morning show? No. And she be tuning in, stealing content from my show. I, be I could never, because you're so smart. Stop it. No, you are so smart. I could never. I played in my strengths. I'm like, y'all want fast to go to 10 10 wins. <laughs> I ain't got you for that. You be having deep, multi level conversations gotta, on your show. Gotta get, into it. gotta get into it. But you know, you're the one. You're the one to get into it. And don't ever stop being who you are, because they need it. Sometimes niggas don't know what they need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think too I often, um, like you said, play to your strengths. I've never really been great at caring about reality shows, gossip, relationships. I've never really been good. I can be entertained by listening to you tell a story because you're a great <laughs> storyteller. But not that I actually give a fuck about the people right. that it's happening to. Yeah, no, it's you just the it's just the like, theatrics. It's just the theatrics. Yeah. But one of my what I found for what I have to do each day is be an individual that's like, ah, oh, this is dumb. Here's why it's dumb. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Pay mm -hmm. attention to this. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I've tried to do with the show, and then I kind of hand it off to other people to chime in. But you do it effortlessly. Like that is so your wheelhouse. Wheelhouse. And when I think back, you were that on our show. Like you know, we're me and Envy. We were like the bad kids in the back of the class, chewing gum and vaping. Like, <laughs> and you always. Put that down. <laughs> Yo, now, you know what I wanted to ask you about? What? We didn't cover this. The Stephen A. Smith chapter. So, why you do that? So, I, so Stephen A. Smith was not in radio yet. No. Stephen A. Smith was a newspaper, and, and, and he was on television doing basketball at ESPN. They would go to him for some coverage. Yeah, there and, there. and he, he was a journalist in, in Philadelphia. And he was a journalist in Philadelphia. Correct. Remind me, we invited him up to your show. You were a follower of his. Yes. And you invited you like, there's this dude from Philly. I know how you feel about Philly. Your people from Philly. I think it would be good. Have him on the show. You're looking for a co-host. Let's see what happens. Right. He came. He was, he was my protector. He was my protector before you were my protector. He stepped in. Y'all both used to protect me because people always used to call and y'all could say whatever, but the minute I chime in, ah, bitch, stay in your lane. He would protect, but um, I don't know if it was budget or maybe he didn't want to lock down. I think if I recall, he had radio aspirations and maybe was getting offers to okay. his own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he knew that his strength was really sports. Mm -hmm. And that's what his passion was. But I loved him because, like you, and there's one other man, um, I 
fuck y'all grown conversation. I'm realizing what my love language is. And it's a man that doesn't ask me about all about me. All, but I get on the phone with you and the first thing out your mouth is, what them boys doing? This one needs this, Jonesy. You always tended to be a little bit this way. Stephen A was like that. Jump into my world and fix me. Without me knowing I needed to be fixed or cared for or loved on, you, him, Charles Coleman Jr., I hope y'all connected. Yeah, we did on the text. Grown men shit. So Stephen A was a, a time we needed to have that. And I'm glad he's going on. Like, oh, been, yeah. He's next yeah. I was just texting with him the other day. He had a little moment, you know, where he had to go at the Clap group. back. The go clap back go. hour, bitch. Ask him, do he need reinforcement? Well, so I texted him on the side. I was like, yo, don't sweat, dude. You know, nobody ever. I saw we, I was there. I saw you work from where you worked from. Right to get like where you are let this clown right yeah and so and then i said and i'm even gonna take credit for your career soon come so just because that's what we do on brand you better know and see we coming you know um but now nah, i wanted to fill that blank because i didn't remember exactly the the order of how things went but yeah, i yeah, yeah. remember you and him having some shows together uh, for Absolutely. A few months. Oh, and then he called me. Months. Our our infamous interview, and y'all probably don't still have it in archives. Maybe you do. Mm -mm. Was Rick James? Remember he came and me and Stephen were there yeah. right before he died. Right before he died. And the next week he died, and Stephen A called me. I'll never forget. I was in Atlantic City with Jalen's father, jealous ass nigga. And Stephen's trying to talk to me about we just interviewed this thing. Who that? Who in the background? He was like, all right, I'm I'm gonna let you go. What? <laughs> See, this is why I can't. I just need to so focus. Wait, but Jalen's dad. Yeah. Jalen's the second. Jalen, no, he's not the second. No, I mean he's the second born. No, Jay, Jay is second the second. Born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jalen's the oldest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jalen was side passe, remember? Right, right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And as much shit as I like to talk about his father, I will say that he shows up for his son. Graduation, summers, takes both kids, gives me some relief. Because at the end of the day. That's really what it's about. I mean, if you have great time with your dad, that's a bonus. <laughs> but a nigga be needing a break. Right. And the judge agreed with me. But again, I won't get into it if you do the right thing. And actually, you know what? Stay away now. Stay, we got a good thing going. Move it. My son is a state champion wrestler. He's part of a state, uh, a state champion football team. We good. We good over here. Now, just stop at, lying at on him. At some point, though. That's on them. It's always on them. But don't say that I'm that girl. I've never been that girl. Like, if we're not together, I left you. Like, you know what I mean? And don't, yeah. That, and, I, and I did it for us. We didn't like each other. So I'm not even trying to shade you with the I left you. Who cares? We would have killed each other. Um. So, so it was for the better. But please stop lying and making people think that I'm the girl that still wants you. And that's why you, I've been... The reason we're in court, whatever. Check on your kid if you feel the need. Oh, um, I don't really have any contribution. Yeah, yeah that's kind of what, like, I don't even know. I'll just drink. Thank you. No problem. And when y'all edit this, when she start going in on them dads, y'all get close. And edit me out. They won't. They're gonna think you down with the Yeah. <laughs> they reach out and I'm in the background going, uh -huh. Yeah, motherfucker, you owe me more than seventy seven dollars a week. Done, right? Seventy seven dollars a week. Oh. Okay. Ebro. Yes. I appreciate you. Keep going. Bravo. Mm. Congratulations on the baby. I'll come and sing for the christening or calling all, calling all christening, calling all christening. All that. She, Tell me in the morning. She probably does. Oh. Listen. <laughs> she, wait, no. she got. Have you met Nicki Minaj yet? I have not. Man. Ebro told me. Years ago. Years ago. He's like, there's this artist. She sounds just like you. Like, she talks the same. Y'all have the same accent. Y'all got the same spiciness. Same. Make that happen. Same chaotic creativity. Same. The pink One, then convo. 
I mean, you yeah, the ADHD is all real. That, all that. It was in the Queen's water. This episode of Pink Champs is brought to you by our friends at Sarah Brown Catering. You need good food at your event, they're going to come in, cook it up, and serve it down. Sarah Brown Catering. Thank you. Hey, Sarah Brown. <laughs>